All right. Are we okay? Yep. yep. All right. Uh, pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted in person and via remote means in accordance with applicable law. This means that members of the public body, as well as members of the public, may access this meeting in person or via virtual means. In-person attendance will be at the meeting location listed above, and it is possible that any or all members of the... Oh, no, wait a minute. Uh. I'm sorry, I read the wrong, um, okay. I read the wrong, uh, read the wrong blurb. Okay, take two. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 21, this meeting will be conducted by remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following um, manner. No in-person attendee no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we, uh, uh, in the event that we will are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town of Amherst website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. I believe that's all. I now call this meeting to order. Okay. Um, and we're looking to see, we, uh, we do not have a member of the public with us at the present time. Minutes. Um, first, first order on the agenda. Uh, gentlemen, have you had a chance to look at the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. Yes. That's a yes, Ken? Yes. Okay. I move that we approve the, the minutes of the meeting of, uh, of July 8th, 2021. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, next thing on the, I gotta pull up my agenda. <clears throat> okay, uh, public participation. We have no, no one from the public. Let's move to the motor vehicle abatement reports. Richard, and Richard, Mr. I'm sorry. Yeah. Could we could we go straight to the PowerPoint for the residential exemption so that Sean doesn't hey, have to hang sure. on? Sure. Just uh, just for the record for the meeting, um, uh, Mr. Mangano is going to present to us a uh, proposed PowerPoint presentation regarding the residential exemption, which I understand is intended to be shown to the town council. Is that correct, Sean? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right, Sean, you have the floor. All right, so um, I'm going to share my screen in a second. Um, again, the objective today was to sort of uh, fill you in on sort of our progress to date and also get your feedback on how this looks and anything that might be confusing or if there's areas where you think maybe we should provide additional information, um, we could do that as well. So any questions you have, don't hesitate to, you know, ask them because it might be something that a counselor would have the same question and maybe we can do something to to the PowerPoint to make it more clear. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share. All right. Do you all see it on the screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Is the size okay? Sure. Yes. I'll make it a little bigger. Thank you. All right. So um, we're going to cover do sort of baseline what the residential exemption is, briefly talk about the study process or the work we've been doing to uh, update this analysis. We'll look at the data, talk about some key points, and then next steps. So I know you all know this, but I will go through it as practice. Uh, the residential tax exemption um, is a tax policy that exempts a percentage of owner-occupied residential property values. So in town, we have a bunch of residential properties, a number of them are owner occupied and a number are um, not, they're rented. And so we'll see in a second how that split breaks down for Amherst. Um, it's a decision that the council must annually consider and decide whether to uh, adopt or not adopt. Um, the amount of the exemption, if it was adopted, can range between um, not really zero, but between zero and 35% of the average residential property value. 
um, whatever that figure is, that, that exemption amount is then applied to all owner occupied residential properties. And I'll, we have an example that I'll walk you through in a few slides. Um, Sean, yes. Sean, quick question. Uh, the second point the town council must annually consider, just to clarify, that means if it is adopted, they must annually consider, is that right? I think they must vote whether to adopt each year. Is that right, David? Yeah, whether it's adopted or not, we have to discuss it every year, Lee. That's a matter, oh, that right? of, state, that's a matter of state law, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I make can I make a comment here? Um, do yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't really see anybody, so just call okay. out if. Um, yeah. The third bullet point. Um, I'm just wondering whether everybody thinks that's clear, or or Sean, do you think it, it's made clear by the rest of the presentation? Um, it. Let's go through it, and then um, what you can do is if. Um, you know, if there's things during the presentation, we can fix those. If there's things you walk away at the end and you say, this isn't clear, you can email them to me directly and I'll try to um, fix them up too. So uh, the next one, this policy shifts the tax burden away from lower valued owner occupied properties. Um, again, you'll see that in a little bit. Um, residential okay. properties on the lower end are gonna save money. Residential owner occupied properties on the higher end are still gonna end up paying more. Um, and, okay. and again, we have a chart that will break that out for people. Can I make a suggestion? You can reject it if you like. Sure. Um, I would say shifts, I would say wording to the effect of onto the other prop, other um, okay. properties. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the wording. I mean, I think it needs to be clear the burden is shifted where the burden is shifted to. Yep, I could do that, that's a good point. Okay. Um, and then the last piece here is just that there are about 15, I can get this, I'll, I'll say there are, I'll get the exact number, but um, there's about 15 communities that have adopted this policy. And you'll see in a, in a few slides that they're all either suburbs of, not suburbs, but major areas around Boston um, or around the Cape for the most part. I don't believe there are any in Western Mass that have adopted this. So the study process, the uh, assessor's office worked to update its record so that we could give you the most uh, um, accurate analysis as possible. We don't, um, and David, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't, as a matter of process, collect information on a regular basis about whether a property is owner occupied or not, because we haven't really had a reason to in the past. Um, we have some technology now that we might be able to do that more as we go forward, um, but we did need to update our records to get a more accurate count of how many residential properties were owner occupied and how many were not. And so the way we went about it was we identified the properties that we were unsure about. There's some that we, we kind of, we know are not owner occupied, like some of the larger rental complexes. Um, and there's other ones that we, we knew the other way. And so we narrowed it down to about, looks like 764 properties um, that we sent a survey to and we re received about 50% of those back. And thank you very much to Teresa who updated all of that in our, um, in our database so that we could uh, have an updated analysis. What, what were the major, I mean, what percentage was saying no, we're owner occupied versus other uh, you'll, you'll see, I don't, of the survey responses, I don't know that. I mean, you'll see the total breakdown of owner occupied okay. versus. I'm versus just trying point. to understand. I would expect somebody that was owner occupied responded and people that were not owner occupied probably did not respond very much to the survey. Teresa, do you, um, anecdotally, do you have any thoughts on when you were updating them, how many of them were one way or the other? No, I mean, we were getting a mix really. I mean, nope. people that, okay. you know, that don't occupy work. I was getting, I'm getting several from, from people that don't, that don't own or occupy. So, I mean, I think it's a mix. I mean, I couldn't give you numbers right off the top of my head. No, but... that's, that's fine. Okay, good. So my, my question is, has the survey garnered the information that we needed? Uh, so it did, I would say, and I'll say this to the council as well. So the analysis that we'll provide will not be 100% accurate. It just, because um, we don't have 100% response rate to these surveys, um, but it did make our uh, our analysis more accurate by at least 376 properties. So, um, so I would say it did achieve what we wanted it to, which was to to have the the most 
up-to-date analysis that we could. Um, and so that, that's what we've done. Sean, how does the response rate uh, compare? I think, David, you said last time it was we were kind of shooting for 50% or we had about 50% last time we did this as well, right? Right. So I think, you know, I think we were hoping to get maybe a little bit higher, but, um, you know, I think getting 50% is, it is what it is. So. David, when the property sells, do you try to identify whether it's owner occupied or not? Ken, in the past we haven't, but I've been thinking about it. And okay. uh, uh, perhaps what we need to do is in uh, June of each year after all the sales are finished before July 1st, send out notices to everyone that we have any doubt about and ask them if the owner occupy the properties based on the sale information we have from the previous year. Okay. That's the best we can do at this time. And David, we may already do this, um, but if not, on our, our rental registrations, do we ask if they're owner occupied those properties or not? Sean, I don't know. So that's that's the when I was talking about technology that might be able to help us keep this more up to date in the future. That's one of the things we're looking at is every year they have to do um, rent uh, people who rent properties have to fill out this registration. And one of the questions we could I think add to that is um, is the property owner occupied, and then we could get that data and update our records. Um, so that'll tell us for a lot of these rental properties that are you know, homes um, that are, th those are the ones that are typically harder to know whether they're owner occupied or not. We'll be able to get better data on that. All right, any other questions on this slide? No, okay. So this slide just breaks down the um, communities that have adopted the residential exemption. And you know there may be more data we want to add to this table. I just did start with a couple sort of factoids about each of these communities. Um, but you can see Barnstable, Boston, you know, many of these are either on the Cape or, or around Boston, um, if not all of them. Uh, their tax rate I put next to it because I think it's interesting just to have a sense of how that that community compares to Amherst. And so many of these communities have very low tax rates. Nantucket, I don't know what's going on there. That's pretty ridiculous to have a three dollar tax rate. Um, they they, they uh, very, it's, pay very it's little proportionally. Really, it's really hard to get too much out of this because some of these have split commercial rates too, and so you got a lot of things moving about. So it. I looked at I, in, a, in a, a, a rare moment of advanced planning. I went through this earlier this morning, mm -hmm. and what do we get with this slide? So I think what I'm trying to, what I was hoping to convey with this slide is um, for the people who are um, thinking about adopting the residential exemption, because they've heard how it has worked in other places, is that we're not like any of the places that have adopted it um, really at all. I mean, just in terms of our tax rate, in terms of our, um, in many cases, in terms of the value of our town, um, the, the you know, residential value of our town. Um, and then there's other things I could add. I could add commercial values. So if people wanted to get a sense of the commercial base, um, but it, the intent of this slide was to say that Amherst, we shouldn't make our decision based on what other towns are doing um, because it would be a different, what we do here would probably achieve something different than what it's achieving in these other towns. Sean, are there common features of, of, of these towns that uh, um, make them more uh, adaptable to, to, to the, uh, exemption yeah so i mean for the cape definitely for the cape i sort of get the rationale um or what i've heard the rationale explained to me is that you know in the cape you have residents who live there year round and maybe more modest homes and then you have vacationers who come in and and buy more you know build um more expensive homes and and raise the values of you know everybody around them and so you know the people who live there year round are sort of feeling the effects of their tax bill going up because of all these other homes around them being, you know, larger homes, more expensive homes being built. Um, and so the exemption there sort of tries to offset that a little bit to provide a benefit to the, the year round residents. So that, that sort of makes sense to me. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the rationale is in like, um, like a Somerville or a Cambridge, other than maybe trying to provide some relief to um, lower valued properties. I think a lot of these have, you know, an element of a large rental market like we do in Amherst. And so they realize, you know, apartment owners are going to pay the bigger bill, not, not the homeowner. So I, I'm sort of with um, Rich on this. 
I think this could raise more questions than that we'd have not have the ability to answer because there's so much going on. So do I take it that do I take it that these are these rates that are showing here are rates that that after the exemption is applied? So um, these are, are these are their rates. these are their current tax rates. Yeah. So these are from the the Department of Local Services. So whatever their current tax rate is okay. is, is what's shown here. So, and, and so I mean right there the exemption. Have, go ahead, Rich. I, and, and some of them have split rates. Yes. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, like Cambridge, I'm sure. And some have thirty five percent exemptions and some have fifteen percent exemptions. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces here. Yeah, no, we, yeah, I mean, if you, if you think this slide is, is confusing or, or doesn't achieve. Um, I, doesn't I think the numbers, the you might want to list the, the cities and stuff, but I think the numbers can be really. Pull confusing. the numbers out. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, um, a councilor, a town council member who's coming at this fresh, uh, and I think many of them are not, uh, would look at, might say, well, gee, we need a, we need a, um, I don't know. They might say, "Gee, we have such a higher rate. We need an exemption." I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm just not sure what this achieves. And I'm so okay. No, what I could do is I can modify this slide to just okay. list the communities, um, and that will still sort of convey the. That, I mean, for most people, they'll still sort of see the pattern of what communities are the ones that have adopted this, and that it's not really a Western Mass. Nobody in Western Mass has done it yet. So, I mean, the, uh, and essentially, what you're trying to convey is we're different. Yeah, and, 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 and that's that's the point I was trying to get to. Why are we different? Uh, what, is there anything that stands out that makes the decision process uh, a little bit clearer for why these other towns went for it? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I think we're different the from the from the Cape, mm -hmm. um, because we're not having a lot of vacation. Like for us, it's not like a vacation. Amherst isn't a vacation community. We have renters, but they're you know ten month of the year renters. Um, yeah, we but might that, be more we might be more comparable to like the, a some Brooklyn of the others, or Cambridge. And some of the others have commercial sectors that I yeah. assume yeah. are being Much. taxed at a different rate. Yeah. Right, that yeah. absorbs a lot of that. Yeah. Right, I think that's a good point. Probably of the yeah. of the big ones like Cambridge and Brookline, their commercial right. sectors are way different than ours, so. Right. Yeah. Lee, I don't think there's any one story here. That's the confusing part. You know, well, all these, uh, I think there's a unique story. I think they do sort of fit into two buckets. Again, right. I, I think you have the, the Cape Cod bucket and then you have the sort of large urban area around Boston bucket. With a large commercial base. Yep. And so I think, I think that's a good point, Lee, that that's sort of, if we wanted to highlight why we're different, those would be the two things to highlight. Yeah, I think if you're going to show the towns, you have to show what, give a reasonable explanation. All right, I'll um I'll modify that, and like I said, maybe I'll just take the numbers off, and I'll just list them, and and maybe I, I can put sort of the, I can summarize those two themes um, mm -hmm. as to why we're different. All right, the next slide. So this is just the breakdown of the residential property types. So we have roughly 6,200 or so um, residential uh, units or parcels. And so 31% of them are non-owner occupied based on the analysis we just updated and 70 or 69% are owner occupied. Uh, I put in the title property types by parcel because I don't think we can emphasize enough, this is by parcel, it's not by housing unit. I agree. Okay, added that. Uh, and, but does every, does each, uh, I'm sorry to ask a stupid question uh, having been here for this long, but um, it, does ev each parcel generate a separate bill? Tax yes. bill? Okay. I mean, if, if you looked at this housing by housing unit, it would be flip flop. In other words, non occupied housing units is about 60% of the units in the Amherst versus owner occupied is about 40%. And, can, and, by of the, and yeah. can you think that's an important point to make? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I think this is clear. This is a higher level. It's clear. But it's, 
if somebody asks by housing units, I'm not sure what the answer is, except it's it's not this, it's the reverse. Yeah. So that, that's important in terms of the impact of a residential exemption on 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 units, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe we can just emphasize that orally. We can say that, just be really clear, this is parcels, not housing units. That would look much different. Yeah. I think, Rich, what it does is if they get into that much discussion, that means that they're, they need to have more study and stuff. Because we just don't have it at this point to feel comfortable, is my feeling. And that's fine. That's what um, we concluded the presentation with, you know, more study if they really want to look into this. Mm -hmm. All right, so you know, I, I think this slide probably can use a little more work um, to make it. To, I, I'm, it's meant for me to walk people through it, but it is a little um, maybe confusing. So let me walk you through, it and then we can talk about how to adjust it if needed. Um, so this is an example of how the exemption would work. So right now, the total residential property value in Amherst is 2.3 billion. Right? Is that correct? Um, yep. And the average value based on 6,259 parcels is $376,000 um, currently. So in this example, we are saying, what would it look like if we did a 15% residential exemption? And so you take that 15% times the average parcel value in the residential class to get the exemption amount of 56,413. And so that's the amount that you will apply against every uh, residential owner occupied property to as an exemption that's the amount you'll apply against them. So it's for a house that's for, worth 200,000, you know, it's a larger percentage exemption versus a house that's worth 400,000. Um, so that's part one, figure out the exemption amount, 56,000. So the second piece here is just more for information, FY21 residential levy, 50,508,000. So that's how much we raised in taxes from the residential class. The single rate, um, the tax rate, effective tax rate for that amount was $21.46 per thousand. So going to the next piece, the total exemption amount. So if we take the total owner occupied residential parcels, which is in the 4,000 4, something, um, and multiply it by 56,000, the amount that we are going to exempt from the residential property value of 2.3 billion up here um, is 244,943,962. So that's how much of our value goes away through this exemption. Um, and that's what this number here, total residential property value after exemption leaves us with uh, 2.1 billion essentially. So if we have only 2.1 billion in value now because this, this large portion has been exempted, in order to come up with the same levy, the same amount of tax money to, to support town operations, this of 50 million, we actually have to have a tax rate of 2395 in the residential class. And so that's why some people want to pay more under this situation. Um, David, anything you want to add to that? No, uh, no, just that we will have to stress this is all in the residential class. Um, uh, does the $25 cap per thousand cap under prop two and a half affect how much we can, how much, uh, how high the percentage could be that we could do? No. It doesn't. So this is an exemption, Richard. So anything, I mean, it's the same as the, um, Split tax rate on the commercial, we can go up to 35 or $40. Okay, so we could, we are under an exemption, we could go over the 25 per thousand. As long as our base, in other words, the total valuation divided into the total budget is not above a single tax rate of $25 per thousand. Okay. Well, as long as the 2146 doesn't go above $25. Correct. Yeah. No, sorry, incorrect. The 2146 is only in the residential class. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. It's on the everything. Yep. If we have a single tax rate. Okay. Right. So, you know, but but the thing too that we do want to stress is it will raise, you know, a rate that's already high in the residential class, even higher, you know, the sort of effective rate that 
people will be paying. So, so why did you pick 15? So we picked 15% because it's sort of in the middle, um, okay. you know, between zero and 35%. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we went with sort of something that would be in the middle. All right. Do you think it necessary to provide, I mean, we could put this in a table that says 15%, 20%, you know, that has different, mm -hmm. it's sort of complicated to go through one ex mm -hmm. analysis. So I just, I didn't want to put too many numbers on here, but if we could easily add more columns that just have different exemption amounts, mm -hmm. if you find that helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a hard time arguing for more numbers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I, th and I, I think this gets the message sure. across, so. I'm not sure that average value number means anything. The 376,000? Yeah. Is well, that, what can, that, that helps people understand how, how the exemption amount is calculated. So that's how you get, okay. I mean, that's how you get to the 56,000 is 15% of that number. I might add some I more see. parentheses in these, this chart to kind of, cause I can do some more there to say how we're getting to certain numbers, so. Yeah, no, that's all right. It's just, you know, the initial average value is really skewed with the apartments in there. Um, it's not anything to do with a single family. Mm -hmm. No, it's not single family. No, this includes all residential. You're quite right. Yeah. It's, so I think uh, if you make that comment to make sure nobody goes that way. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think median is, David? Was median much? Come on, David. <laughs> All right. So, you, so don't, any... you don't have that number off the top of your head, Dave? <laughs> That's in the retired portion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, it, do you have any, like, was that okay the way I walked you through it with this chart? Would you, do you think it was, I know it's a little bit complicated just because it is a complicated sort of, um, analysis to for people that don't do it all the time which is all of us so um would you add anything else to this just to be affirmative i like it so okay yeah yeah okay i mean i would have the calculation done in in the back on notes so you have it available and somebody said well what if it was 35 percent yeah no, that's a good point what i could do is i could add a i could add a, a table at the end of the powerpoint presentation after the final slide that if anybody mm -hmm. has a question on it, I could pull that slide up that has okay. other scenarios. Hey, Sean, do you think there'd be any benefit in that, just as a look at this, and I, I know we've looked at it before, where it says total exemption amount, mm -hmm. could we put in there based on 4,259 occupied properties or whatever it is? Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think um, yeah. what I would do I'm going through this explain. is I can, yeah, I can put more in parentheses to say where that comes from. I might okay. pull this piece out in the middle where it says FY21 residential levy and the single rate and put that in a different spot. So it's not okay. sort of in the middle of the, cause all this other, this other piece is all sort of part of a calculation. So, um, so I might just rearrange it a little bit, but. Who, who do we think is doing this presentation? Uh, it'll probably be David and I. Okay. Right, David, I can sign you up. Yeah, that's fine, yes. Okay, good. <laughs> and, do have, and do we have is a this date? Like, is this uh, like I no, we have a, a classification hearing date of October 4th. Yeah, and I, I did talk to Paul, David, about maybe doing it that same meeting while tax, uh, you know, property taxes are on people's mind. Um, maybe doing the initial presentation of this. I'm not sure if that's def a definite yet, but just as a heads well, up. Well, I, I agree. I think it should be part of that presentation. Okay. So we can uh, mark our calendars October 4th? Yeah, yeah I think uh, that's... we can talk about a meeting before then as okay. well. Okay. Just to go over the whole classification meeting hearing. Yeah. Well, and if and you have we... this at the same same meeting, then your classification presentation would be a lot shorter and right to the point because you wouldn't include <laughs> all this stuff. We would hope, Ken. We would hope. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this was covered in your classification presentation. So you can, yeah. if you combine these, you can really shorten that thing. And what we envision is, um, you know, there'll be one meeting where we present this, and then there'll probably be a follow-up meeting for, for the board uh, or for the council to actually to make a decision. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Then it can't be at the same classification meeting, then. Yes, it can. Well, if you're going to have a follow-up meeting after that for... It's vote. just a... Just a classification hearings, we can either discuss everything and vote on it at the same night, or we can table the vote until oh. the next meeting okay i didn't realize we've always had them where you vote the same night 
Yeah, we've been lucky before, but I'm not sure about this year, Ken. Okay. Okay, that's fine. So that's the exciting bridge between the Tom Brady game the night before and the <laughs> Boston at Re Boston Red Sox at the New York Yankees the night after. That's not um that's not the Brady Patriots game, is it? Is that the That's the night before. Oh, okay. Might have to rearrange this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll keep going. We're almost done. Um so I tried to um, summarize the impacts of this example as you know, in an understandable format, but I might have missed the mark. So if there's other ways you think we should show this, let me know. So what I did is I just I broke. Um, we applied that. We did that example. We looked at each parcel and and what that would do to each parcel, and then I sort of tiered it based on how it would change their what they currently are assessed in taxes to what they would be assessed in taxes. Um, under this new system, or I should say, David did it, uh, and so we we tiered it the the impact. So, for example, fifty eight communities would see, or fifty eight sorry, fifty eight parcels, uh, and I, I think what I should do is change this to number of parcels. Fifty eight mm -hmm. parcels would see a reduction of a thousand dollars or more from what they're currently paying. Three thousand eight hundred forty three parcels would see a reduction somewhere between one dollar and nine hundred ninety nine dollars. Um, and so on and so on to where down to the bottom where um, 23 parcels would pay more than $10,000 more than what they're currently paying. I, I like this format. A um, couple of suggestions would be at the data up top, put 15% exemption example with mm -hmm. the number 15%. And then yep. I'd add two more columns. Have this column that you have by number of parcels, but the next one have number of owner occupied parcels and then the third column will number non-owner occupied. So you can see how these numbers break down between owner occupied and non-owner occupied. Okay. Well, can it be the same numbers? Well, the they're going well, you know, to add together to be a, a total of 58. Once we get into the that. increase area, David, though, it'll be a little bit of both, right? Once the once we start looking at the tax bills yeah, that are so going we'll, up, that's quite correct. Yeah. Yeah. So we can we can do that. I think that David do I did, take, did a good job setting it up that way. If I understand this correctly, the reduction, the number of reduction, the total number of reductions, and the total number of increases do not change due to the n amount of the, the exemption. Correct. Correct. Okay. The yeah the. The savings might change, right, David? The, uh, yeah. David, yeah. the savings and the reductions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, what, is that right there? They David, does the does increases? the break even does the break even move yeah. at all if we have a different exemption level? Oh, the the break even's going to move, but the number of parcels, like the thirty nine oh one, would stay the same for the people that are getting the reduction. Okay. But if the break even moves higher, when it then there be fewer in the reduction. I mean, we can. Well, play, the good thing is we can play around with it because we've got the yeah. Excel sheet. With All right, the, the break evens within 10, 10 uh, parcels of each other. I've tried all four. Okay. I've tried it with five, 10, 15, and twenty. So it's, it's always with about ten gotcha. properties. So it's not a big change at all. Okay. And, and that's a number you want to have handy because they'll definitely ask you this fifteen percent exemption. What is the break even? Right. That's a good point. That available. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yep. No, we'll have that. I mean, this, this is being, well, obviously this is being presented to the existing council. Mm -hmm. And I think the existing council generally, most of the existing council gets this stuff, I think. Yeah. Well, they've got a fairly, they've, ha they've had exposure to it. And particularly the people who were select board members before are very yeah. familiar with it. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll add those two columns and um, and then maybe I'll even put it like a little breakout that says break even is this amount. So people, it's right yeah. there. Right. Yeah. All right, so key points. So this is where we, um, so I took the approach of at this point, we're not necessarily making a recommendation. I'm just trying to lay out facts. I think one of the things we want to talk about with this group is whether you, you think a recommendation is in order. And I think Paul, you know, that's something Paul's also thinking about is whether we should have a recommendation. Um, but let me go through the things that we lay out as facts um, and then see if we want to add anything. So 
this policy shifts the tax burden based on the assessed value of a property and its ownership status. It does not shift the tax burden based on ability to pay or income status. So wanted to hammer home that this is, you know, if it, this is something that's trying to target relief to low income individuals, it doesn't, there, there's no way to guarantee that's where the relief is going. Um, Large apartment complexes are non-owner occupied and therefore we'll see a large increase in their tax liability if this policy is adopted. And I think the reason we said that was important, um, again, is because there are many low income individuals who live in, in uh, large apartment complexes and so they could see an increase in rent as a result of this. Um, so again, that just speaks to if the, if the goal of this policy is to provide relief to low income individuals, it doesn't necessarily do that across the board in a, in a fair way. Um, there are numerous, numerous situations where a property may be owner occupied for reasons other than renting to students or casual visitors of the town. Um, so David and I actually had sort of a firsthand conversation with somebody, which really I wasn't even thinking about, but um, the more I think about it, I, there's probably are num a number of examples like this in town where um, a sibling or a parent um, or a child is the owner of record on a property, but lets somebody else live in it. Um, so, you know, a child maybe could own the property for a parent, but the parent still lives in it or the parent could own it um, and is letting their child live in it, but they live somewhere else. In any of those situations, those would be considered um, non-owner occupied and they would still have to pay the higher taxes. And you um, think we have more of those than we might have thought before? Is that, is that? Yeah, I mean, the more I think about it, because I, I, you know, I just think about my own family situation where I know like my parents were put on the uh my grandmother had transferred ownership of her house to my parents for example um before she before she passed away so my parents yeah. were the owner of the technically the owner of the property but my grandma lived there um, okay and so but in that circumstance the taxes would be higher because that would be considered non-owner occupied so i think there i don't know how many of those situations are we know there's at least one um and I'm sure there probably are more like that um, in town. Okay. Yeah, there was a few of those residential exemption applications that came in that had stated they had family members living there. So, okay, not a lot of them, but a few. Um, the next one is this policy will increase the residential tax rate in order to make up for the exemption amount. So we sort of spoke to that before, but just wanted to hammer that point home and, uh, and make clear that it's one... residential. I mean, one thing we need to make sure they realize it's not going to amount, it's not going to change the amount of residential taxes we collect. It's just going to reallocate them. Yeah, no, that's right. a good point. Is I can add that. Yeah. Because people not. think some way a higher tax rate, we're going to get more money. We're not going to get more money. <laughs> the revenue, the, the total revenue is the same. Correct. That's right. It just yeah. reallocates who pays it or who, where it comes yeah, from. Yeah, uh, that, that's a good but point. I'll add with, that within the residential. Yeah. Um, and then there's two more. Um, if adopted, the assessor's office will need additional resources, at least in my opinion, um, you know, and planning time in order to implement. Um, and we'll need to develop a more robust mechanism for determining the ownership status of a property. So, you know, if this does become go into effect, we'll want to have a, a, you know, other than a survey that we do periodically, we'll want to have another mechanism for really verifying, I, you know, because it does, ha could have a significant financial impact for property owners. Um, we would want to have some sort of system for verifying whether it's owner occupied or not on a regular basis. And then the last piece is um, just outlining what I, what I think of, we've talked about in the past, which is the council should include in its consideration what it hopes to achieve with its tax policy and whether the residential exemption supports that intent. Um, you know, I could remove that one because that's not as much of a factual thing. That's more of just a Maybe a, well, guide, I think a that's guiding key. point, but I think that's key. It's the council that makes tax policy. Mm -hmm. I get very uncomfortable when we're, you know, sort of implied that assessors should make the tax policy. Mm -hmm. I think it's the council that should be deciding okay. what they Thank want you. to do. I agree with Kellen. It's very important to stress that we can recommend, but the bottom line is the council has to make it. Mm -hmm. Um, Can you go back uh, one page, Sean? Yeah. Please. Um, 
I think if we're presenting the facts, the after the second bullet where we say large of comp apartment complexes, non owner occupied see large increases. I would add another bullet below that saying, you know, okay, these see large tax increases, who benefits? Mm -hmm. And so I'd say, I think it's like 90% of owner occupied properties would see a reduction in their taxes. So that's where, you know, here's where it goes increases, but here's where the reduction is mm -hmm. in the owner occupied home. And David, you can come up with the exact amount, but it's it's a very right. high percentage. Thanks, Cal. I appreciate that. <laughs> is that is that all oh, of the points from that page, or is there one below it that I that we're missing? Is there? Um, that's there all. Of them? No, that's okay. it. I thought you made a reference to a public um, a public input process. That's where... at the. We have a couple more. That's at the okay. one more slide. Um, all right. That's the recommendation at that. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Um. David, you've made recommendations in previous presentations. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. We always have recommendations as the last part. Yes. Yeah. What do you think the expectation will be this year? I oh no, I th I think they'll expect the same recommend. Well, they'll expect a recommendation on all the things: the split tax rate, the open space, mm -hmm. uh, and this. Mm -hmm. And we and should I, make basically. You mean it's basically going to be, in my opinion. The same recommendation that we made in the past, and that's mm -hmm. not the same as making policy. That's just no, 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 no. Making, no that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I mean, yeah. I appreciate Ken. I think Ken wants us to be, yeah, real uh, clear. Yeah. Sort of taxation Jack Webb figures, just the yeah. facts. I, I get mm -hmm. that. I get that. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't yeah. know. I, I mean, do we? Do I think they expect the recommendation right from the principal yeah, assessor? Yeah. They do expect a recommendation, yes. Okay, and mm -hmm. I don't know whether the board is supposed to sign on to that or, or not. I don't know. Well, we can just, that's what we're meeting for, to discuss if we can by the end of the month. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't know, it's just me. I, in past years, I sort of felt that recommendation carried a little too much more weight than it should. And therefore, it sort of, the council just said, oh, let's go along with it. And they didn't generate their own discussion. And, and that's where I'm hesitant to recommend okay. myself personally. I'm fine with the commercial and the split rate and that stuff, um, recommending those. But this one, I'd really like the council to take a little more ownership of what they're doing here. We can certainly do that, Ken. That's, that's, that's not a big, you know, the recommendation's right. always been there because we thought we should do it, but you're, you're I mean, all right. Other, I mean, you could, you could still go ahead and make it yourself, David. That's, yeah. I just personally feel that, well, I, I, and we can I, I, make a recommendation on the first two items. Or we can have the recommendations come from Paul and the principal assessor, if you like. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I mean, I really feel as though uh, on the residential exception, we're essentially sitting on the lid of Pandora's box here. Um, you know, I if if this I the uh, if you open this up, it's um, it's change, and you will have a hue and cry like you wouldn't believe. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not, I don't think it's worth it. And I think there are a couple of I think there are a couple of uh, town, uh, council members who the, the former select board members I think get this. Yeah. And I think most of the rest of the council does too. And there might be a couple of people who who want to give their neighbors a tax break. Well, you know, this is one of the things <clears throat> that I mentioned a while ago. We have not contacted any of the apartment complex people who do know this is going to go on. All they're going to see is a notification in the paper or on the web page. And to be frank, most people don't pay any attention to that. So this is in, inside the council alone. The people that will impact the most are not going to have any say. Well, that's the 90% of homeowners that don't have any say either. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why I think we need to, here's an increase in tax liability, but I think we need to put the other side saying, you know, 90% of the homeowners that occupy their homes will see a decrease in taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. I, I don't think we're presenting the whole picture if we're just saying this, here's the increase, but we're not telling where it's going, where it's being reallocated to. Well, I think I think on the last page you did on the page before you did. I think yeah. didn't you? 
No, well, these are key points, though. These are summaries of the whole thing. Right here. Right. Is, yeah. Doesn't that give you a eyes glaze over here? Their mm -hmm. eyes glaze over when they look at this. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm serious. No, it was the next page after that where, where, where you say what, what yeah. Yeah. Go, so this page is a, yeah. uh, this one here or one more? No, no the one before that. This one. Yeah. If adopted. Yeah, my, my thought is that they do show interest in this and they they want to move towards adopting it, that we should strongly encourage them to propose adopting it for the next cycle <laughs> and that we would do all the like work to get it, do all the oh, mechanisms in place to have it ready to go for, for the next sure. cycle. Oh, that's yeah. for sure. I think they still need a lot more information before they can vote to accept it. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, the other thing about the situation now is that we don't really have that much journalism in in town now so the yeah, word getting where, out yeah here's where you put yeah. the weight on the council um these two points this is where you put the weight on them to let them know that hey they're the ones but what would your answer be if they asked for a recommendation i would recommend against it speaking for myself <laughs> yeah right right mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what i'm saying i think you should be prepared for uh, that that point of, of, of being able to respond to the recommendation question. And, and I can work with Paul to find out if he wants to put that recommendation in this PowerPoint. And if we do, we can be clear where it's coming from. Um, mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't wanna misrepresent the board um, as a mm -hmm. whole. So we could, mm -hmm. you know, we could say, this is a recommendation from the principal assessor and the, and the town manager, like David said, so people are clear. Um, and then if you guys are in attendance that night, you know, counselors could certainly ask you individually how you feel about it as well. I mean, I mean, I mean uh, for me, the unintended consequences continue to be the rentals. Now, I, I think David has a way somehow to, to calculate this, which I just don't understand. But um, I think the, the intended consequences are for owner occupied properties and you can pretty much identify those. But for the rentals, who knows what that would mean? Like a That's why exception. I think Sean's last statement is the, the key. I mean, I, I'm not recommending against it. I'm just not recommending for it because I don't think we have enough. If I was a council person, I don't think I have enough knowledge to know whether I should vote yes or no on this. And, and I think, Ken, you know, one of the reasons why I would lean towards recommending against it myself is because I never want to be the first person to do something in a lot of ways. Um, okay. And, That's and I think fair enough. I think, you know, if we were ever going to do it, we would want to see like a community that's similar, you know, like a Western Mass community, like a Northampton or, a, um, you know, East Hampton or a community that's sort of similar to us in some ways implement it. And then we could actually really see the specific impacts directly. We could look and see if rents went up or, um, you know, how, how the benefits were distributed. Um, right now, we don't really have a great way of doing that because um, there's not really a comparable town to us out there. Mm, I've been on that list. There is somewhere with a big university college presence. I think the problem, oh, no. you know, I think right. the biggest difference, again, I think the ones that might compare are the ones around Boston, but it's just, I think if I, you know, I thought about putting the commercial base on here, if we put the commercial base on here, mm -hmm. um, they're going to have huge commercial bases, would be my guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, you'd have, we'd have to dig down into yeah. the Brookline, yeah. the Cam Cambridge. You know those with big university populations. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 unclear the point the point you're making, Ken, about you're saying you wouldn't recommend. What what is it that what is it your position on this? I wouldn't recommend we approve the council approve an exemption this year. Okay. I just don't think they have enough knowledge, and therefore agreed. They, and it needs to be not just the council but the town talked about it. And so you would agree with me that you would have to somehow figure um, measure, figure out a way to measure the impact on rents. Oh, I don't think that's too hard. David's done it. It's a matter I, I of have those spreadsheets. It's a matter of whether you want to present. Yeah, I mean, it's a, these are not small spreadsheets. No. <laughs> and that's where this needs to be in a committee town with town people. Yes. To digest all this spreadsheet stuff and you know, who are the renters? We can easily cal calculate the effect of the rent, but who are the renters? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's not something you can do easily. 
So that's like, like a separate task force. Yeah, which, you know, with this year, what was going on with everything, it was not a good year, plus with it, COVID. So you almost have to wait until after COVID to be able to get a town group together and do stuff. Um, David, are you prepared to lead that residential exemption task force? Into, into, <laughs> I'm into retired, next year? Sean. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We need him as a, we need him as an assessor. So, so I'll, so I'll be honest. I was hoping we provide them some data this year that the council can, can use as a basis to make the decision for the next two or three years, and then they can revisit this every so often. But I do worry about this becoming like an annual study um, process. Oh, you know what? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> so, um, are, right, we so, are we required by state law to revisit the residential exemption every year? We are. Yeah, so. yeah. that's why we yeah, want to provide question, sort of yeah. a, uh, some data that can inform a few years ahead, you know, at a time, and then we can update that data every so many years. Um, okay. So we think this year we've updated enough where we have a solid foundation, at least on the numbers we're looking at, um, that we could make some projections for the next couple of years. So you North, know, uh, Northampton goes through this every year too. Everybody was so this, every municipality. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that was, was my question. Yeah, that was my question. You, you have to do this every year. Yep. I Part mean, of the you classification. Have to, you, have to, you have to address it. You don't have to go into detail, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. But I think if you look at most communities, it's a, you know, 80, 90% of their homes are owner occupied. So it's not a, it's not a question. You reality. Yeah. But, you know, the other thing is that we, we're, our residential tax base is only going to get bigger and it's going to be in the apartment complex. You guys can see all that's happening all around you at the minute down in University Drive and, and the, those. So the residential class is going to keep getting big, bigger and the biggest portion of that will be rental units that we, we could possibly pass this on to their uh, tenants. And that, that's why our rental, our single family rental market is going to grow and grow. And we're going to have fewer and fewer homeowners because they can't afford the homes. Oh, well, that's possible. That's right. I mean, that's, that's my biggest concern. You know, over 50% of our home stock now is investment properties rented. And we're not going to have people, people can't afford to live in town because the investors bid the prices up. Every time a house comes for sale in North Amherst, they buy it. <laughs> and there's no i think that i mean that is probably the, one of the biggest challenges with the housing stock is and, and the rents aren't much more affordable either right so it's <laughs> both yeah. sides are not very affordable but that's i mean that goes back to that housing study that was just done you know and they they looked at a lot but um all right well let me finish up know. just so because i don't want to take up your whole yeah stuff that you on sean i don't know that I wouldn't recommend doing it this year. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But I, I really would like the council to pick up a little and talk more instead of just, oh, you recommend, okay, we approve. Mm -hmm. So um, I might add a few more next steps, but the main one is if there is, you know, before they vote, if it does seem like there's a lot of interest in this, that they do need to do some public engagement um, around this topic where they do invite rental complexes in and homeowners and, and get input directly from people um, on this topic. Yeah. And then yeah, I just want to say, based on my observation of sitting in on classification hearings, I do get the sense that most of the council gets this stuff. So I guess I'm a little different than Ken. I, I think they just summarily dispatch the, the issue, but I do think that most of them um, understand uh, what's involved in the uncertainties. I think the old timers do, but I'm not sure when the new timers do. Who knows? I mean, I, no. I, I'd be curious to just see if there was no recommendation, what they would, would they come up with their own vote or would they say, wait a minute, what are you guys recommending now? No, I think the, I think the two select board members would speak up and, um, and yeah. only one of those is rerunning, right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, Good I discussion, um, Sean. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate all of your um, all of your input. So what I'll do is I'm going to make some revisions to this based on everything you guys identified, um, and I'll send you another draft just for your for your information at some point hope, that's updated. And um, and I think David, we're going to try to have one more meeting before the fourth. Yeah, I want to talk to the board about that. Yes. Okay. 
All okay, right. I hope we weren't too hard on you, Sean. No, no, no. That's exactly <laughs> what I was looking for. That's what I was hoping is run right. by you all first and, and then fix it up. So thank you very much for your service to the Board of Assessors. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Too. Thanks, Sean. Okay, we're back on our agenda. If I can find it, we're going to uh, we're going to take it from the top. If that's okay, David, uh, uh, motor vehicle motor vehicle abatement reports. Yep. Oh, uh, let me get you a spreadsheet. Share the. Let me share the screen. So this oh. is the first time David has not been shoving papers at us across yeah. a table. Right. <laughs> thank, Teresa, thank you for putting the together all like this. So it's yeah. thank you. Hope it's David. easier. I'm yeah, sure it's a lot easier. Sure, yeah. it's going to be easier. Yeah, David, I'm you, impressed with your technical expertise here. Wow, sharing the screen, you're doing real well. <laughs> you do you know how much training I got? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we're doing the motor vehicle exercise now. I'm not quite sure how the vote goes. Have you guys been voting line by line, yeah. or can we discuss them all and then vote them as one? Well? We vote. We vote. Uh, we vote. Um, um, a week by week. Okay. So we need to, do we need we to do five, that? We have five votes. Do we need to do that? I don't know. David, do we need to do that? Or we just look at all of them and vote them as a group? Well, I would think so, as long as we vote just on the one particular group at a time. You know, like... I mean, it's, it's essentially five signatures, right? Right. But, I, I mean, if, we've, if we discuss them and then vote to sign off on all of them, as long as, as, long as we agree on all of them. Yeah. Or we, so... Yeah. Go for it, David. Let's streamline uh, things you, here. You, All right. Well, the, the first one's obviously the abatement status for the. Can um, you blow that up bigger? One more time. Can you make that bigger? Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> now your testing is. Sorry. Oh, that cool. doesn't mean to happen. Let's go sports, yeah. football. You go. See, you guys confused me. Go I'm back to better. the first tab. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, bigger, smaller. There it is. Um, somehow I lost the plus my... sign. Do the plus sign, David. Do yeah. the plus sign. Oh. That's what. Okay. There you go. There you go. That's David. good, Richard. More. Yes, I lost my. Um... One more, David. There I you lost more? my agenda. Lee, okay. I'm okay. Slide That's good. That's little. great. That's great. That's great. Slide right it there. over. Right there. Slide it over. You can't. I don't think you could slide it over. Can no, you? I'm can't. done with that. That, that, that's that's right. something you have to do, Ken, by changing your screen. Oh, okay. All right. Well, this is the motor vehicle excise abatements for the first week of July 1st to July 9th. And as you can see, there are the usual reasons uh, out of town, uh, change of ownership, cancel plates. So, and that's for 1277.11. 12, yeah. So I, we can go to the next one. Unless you have any questions on these, I'm just going to go ahead, okay? Okay. Yeah. This is the second one for this week of 14th to 23rd for $2,753.61. As you can see, this one, we've added quite a few from your, a few from UMass in there. And then we've got the week of this 28th to the 30th, short week. Uh, $364.88. And then the following week for the second to the sixth, uh, 2890.42. And then from the ninth to the 17th for 1232.88. And these are all regular motor vehicle excise abatements with nothing out of the ordinary on them. Okay. I move that we approve our signatures on all five of those abatement uh, reports. Second. All those that was in Kim. favor? Yep. Yep. All, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. Let me just move some paperwork here. Okay. Let's see. What's next on the agenda here? Commitments. Commitments, right. Right. These are the motor vehicle excise. And uh, as you can see, we've got one for FY 2020 for $76.67. 
And the first, this one and this next one are both recommits from other communities or late building from the state uh, for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So the first one, 76, 67. And there's the warrants and the commitments. Okay, can you explain this to the highly educated but thick uh, former attorney? Um, <laughs> what, what, these came from a these but, came from a um, another community. Can you explain that for us, please? Yes. Well, sometimes first... people sometimes we like in the, for example, we let you shoot spray. They have the same zip code as us, and the people may uh, get a bill from us or may get a bill from us to them, or vice versa. And then the community abates them and sends it on to the community that it does belong to. And then we've got some people who have moved during the year and uh, didn't notify the registry of motor vehicles, but they were living here and they weren't living in the old community. And so they're abating that there and sending it to us so we can build them. And that's what they're called rebuilds, right, Teresa? Yeah, they're, they're called recommits. So the one you see for FY 2020 and FY 2021 are recommits. Those are all the bills that I had gotten from other places that needed to be rebuilt because they were built in the other community and, and, Teresa, abated, and abated there. Okay. There, there are two of them? Yeah, the 676, 67, yeah. and the 642, 84. Right. And they're for different years. That's why there's two of them. Are these about cars? Yes. Yeah. Motor vehicle excess. Okay. And we have to we have to uh, affix our signatures to these, correct? Yeah, and the next one. And this is the commitment number three from the state for this year. And that's why it's so large at eighty one thousand six hundred and twenty five dollars and some odd cents. It's from the state. Me the, all of the, those. Sorry, David. Go ahead. That's just the third commitment for fiscal year 21 that we received from the state. We received like seven commitments during the year because people who are getting new cars during the year, the registry will send us on the bills. And these are the, the third, this is the third commitment for the fiscal year, I mean, for calendar year 2021 for motor vehicle excise. Okay, so, so that's these why are that was like. This represents uh, the the tax bills for the, the taxes for um, for new cars for motor vehicle excise tax bills that were registered this year. All right, right during the year. Yeah. Um, so we have three of these to do. No, we just did the one of them, the eighty one thousand six twenty five. Okay, and then the seventy six that we are we have to yeah, approve the, that. Yeah, yeah, the you three. Gotta, you got to right. sign all those. All right, so I, I approve. Um, I want to approve our signatures on all of the commitments there. So I move. <laughs> uh, Who moved you, that? Are, are you following, Ken? Yes, I'm listening. Richard <laughs> moved the, and, and I seconded. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Right. Here we go. I hope you've read this one. This one's interesting. Yes, this one is. Uh, this is a. This is a very thick plot. Uh, well, the plot seconds. Um, <laughs> can I ask whether? Can I ask whether the fourth bullet point is that is not a typo on the date? No, it's not. Okay. Um, basically, what this boils down to is the old owner used a credit card pay for something and then they withdrew it at the closing and we can no longer close against them because they don't have the bill in their name with no way of collecting it so do what the um there's two two different types of eight of 58 and you're going to get a lesson on both of them at this time um this is an eight of 58 from the collector as being uncollectible she can't find it so what we do is she asks us the board to abate this bill and it goes into a status where it's not really abated all the way. It's going to be there, sitting in the background all the time. So if there's ever an opportunity to collect it in the future, we can. But at the moment, it leaves the tax bill clean for the new owner is where we're coming to. 
So as I understand it, the the old owner paid a bill with a credit card or whatever that led to the um, to the title being clean, uh, so to speak. And then uh, so the property was sold to the new owners and then the old owner essentially um, said, oh, this is fraud. Uh, uh, my payment was fraud. Um, or what's listed as my payment was fraud. So, so the company refunded her the money. Yes. And so, and so that could then created a cloud on the title or whatever. Okay. All right. So, so the money is gone basically. At the moment. Yes. And what's the amount of the money again? $2,950 and 55 cents. Okay. Wow. Hey, David, what would be a circumstance where you could co collect in the future? Uh, if they if they came back in the town and bought a new property, we could move against them. We could reassess it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they will or not, so it's really up in the air. Mm -hmm. And we have a mechanism where that would pop, where the bill would pop up on something. Yep. Okay. Yep. So how do I avoid this in the future happening again? <laughs> we tell the attorneys not to think credit cards <laughs> i don't can i really don't know if we can or not this is i mean in nearly 30 years this is the first time i've come across this i mean online payment sounds like it was made to the town of amherst online is that right yeah okay uh, hmm. that's crazy boy so that was that was that was real estate taxes and water sewer bill yes no, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is. I guess we have no alternative, right? So we're being asked to approve what? A, a, a bidding under chapter eight of, or section eight of chapter 58, $2,950.55. All right, so moved. Second. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah. So that no, goes, to, this is, so that this goes is, to the dead letter office, right? <laughs> so to speak. Circular file, but don't tell anybody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. This is a different eight of 58. And I don't think I really got any paperwork on it. And uh, all right. This is just going to be explaining for now. This, the, the discuss this eight of I do you want to do this we, first or do you been, want to do the been through first? this before? We've been through huh? this before. We've been through this one before, I believe. And no, can no, raise no. some interesting questions at the time. All right. No, I shouldn't have gone that far. That's the person that's the exemptions. I'm on discuss eight of fifty-eights at the minute. The second set of fifty-eights below the residential exemption can on your you agenda. Back? Can you go back? Okay, go back. Uh, well, there's no paperwork for it. That's what I'm saying. Oh. It's just a discussion. Oh. Okay. All right. There's no there's no audio visual for this one. Not for this one, no, because okay. it, it really is a discussion. All right. There's been a property in town that appears to have been over assessed. Well, in fact, it is over assessed. So they didn't file on time, and it is quite a large amount. We're talking sixty thousand dollars in taxes. We don't have any room to act on it and it's too late for them to file an abatement application. So we can ask the Department of Revenue for special circumstance under our volition to go ahead and abate the money and send it back to them. That is the 8 of 58 that we have and the DOR must sign off on it. And that's why it's different from what we just did. What had happened was you know the new apartment complex in Northampton Road, 408 Northampton, the second one out there where the old hotel used to be? No. At the bottom of the hill? No, at right the across from Stop and Shop. Yeah, yes. Okay. That one, whoever went out and did it the first time only assessed the first floor of the property oh, at a 40% completion rate for FY 2021. And that came up with a value of somewhere in the region of $3 million, including land. I was reviewing some stuff and noticed that the second story should have been really added to the property. 
And I went ahead and talked with Liz at the time and said, we need to do an omitted revised assessment bill for this. And I added $5 million to the second floor, but I didn't realize that we were 40% of market value. So it should only have been $2 million. The people themselves never discovered this, never caught up with it. And so the bill was sent out for the $125,000 in taxes or whatever was in that region, instead of $65,000 in taxes. It's too far along now for us to bid it. So we need to ask the Department of Revenue to help us with this if they will. In fact, I actually had a phone call just from the Department of Revenue and I'm wondering if that's what it's about, but I didn't want to break off from the meeting. Um, so that's where we are in that. If they give us permission, we will abate this at the next meeting. If they don't, I'm not quite sure what we'll do. We'll need their help, but we'll figure it out. And that's what a need of 58 is in this case, getting permission from the state. I vaguely remember we, we talked about this at the time with Liz. And, no, uh, I, don't, I don't think we did, did we? I yeah. don't think we did either. I remember that the, there was a, a discussion about only the first floor having been reviewed oh. and yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I remember, but uh, and, but there was no, um, we just let, 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 let it happen. And uh, when I say let it happen, the bill went out, obviously. Yeah, the omitted bill would have gone out at that time, Lee, and it was after we discovered that it should have been applied 40%, that's 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, I, I don't understand why we got involved. I, I don't remember being involved. I don't either. Well, well you, the only way you this. should have been involved at that point was getting told that you had an omitted assessment to sign off yeah, on. Exactly. And that's that you would have done that as a commitment yeah. to, this, right. uh, to the collector. Right. Do you remember right. doing supplemental tax bills? Signing off on those because they were all done at the same time. We could go back in the minutes and, and, That's and, all right. and verify it. I mean, it's no biggie at this point. We no. we have to go forward with it. But uh, so we have so we've overbilled the um, we've overbilled on the property. Is that right? Right. That's essentially what it's come down to. Right. Okay. The second mm -hmm. floor was the full value instead of forty percent. That's correct, Ken. Right. So, so uh, all I'm doing at the minute is. Really putting this in front of you in case it comes to the board next month, okay? Right. Okay, so there's no there's no action that needs to be taken, no vote that needs to be taken. No, no this is purely advisory to you three, you three at the minute. Okay, right. so do you have some um, alternative route to get to where we need to go if uh, the state says no? A tall building and jump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but I'm sure that. I'm working with Lauren Aldridge and her and I'll work it out between us and get it sorted out. Okay, we'll so vote next the, time. We'll vote next time. Probably, yes. Whatever is you do. Whatever property you do. owner aware that he, she or he was overbilled? Not no, even, no, are. they seem to be quite content. Oh, okay. Okay, good. I got a bird just trying to get into my window. <laughs> oh, well. So this is yeah. one of those occasions when the government actually without any prompting comes back and gives money back yeah well you know we're talking a fair bit of money here yeah it's right. not the government it's david yes well, no it's david. us it's us <laughs> uh anyway okay. that's that if you're all right with that one go on to the uh, exemption right. or the the abatements I mean, I, I, say that I, I say what I say what I said about that because I have a father who basically paid state income taxes that he didn't have to pay, oh. and no no one came oh. back to him and gave him his money back. So, well, we, we will try our best. Okay. Now these uh, three abatement applications are for three properties of the um, the town purchased from Ken Keith Canetta, and all the first three quarters of all of them were paid the taxes and the town uh, bought the property before the fourth quarter was due. So all I'm asking you to do is abate the taxes. 
we're not going to change values because all we're talking about here is taxes. And I think Ken raised the question um, months ago when we saw this last as to why this wasn't all included in the closing. No, th this was never paid, right, David? Right, that's correct. Yeah. The other one was paid. Okay. It's a difference. Yeah. So that's all three of them are basically the same. We're asking you to a bit. 1726 and 3514 CPA. Um, okay. 74021 and 587 on CPA. And the third one is 142134 and 2630. All right. So where are these located? All in Belchertown Road, Ken, there's a little complex there. Keith Canetta owns several properties, 72 to 80. Okay, what's the town going to do them to the land? Well, that's uh, the last I heard, and the, the, this was as early as yesterday, we looks like we're going to be uh, sending out a request for people to build low-income housing on it, along with the old East Street School, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Oh, yeah, okay. So that, that's a thought. Obviously, these are going to be torn down at some stage and new housing put up. So, so I need you guys to make a decision. Uh, so it's essentially three separate abatements? Yep. Okay, I move that we approve those three abatements. Second. Every, any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. And now there's just one other thing we need. I would like to have another meeting before the end of the month, if we can. Before the end of the month. Well, before the fourth. The fourth is a classification hearing. Okay. And and the agenda, David. Sorry. Yeah. Why? <laughs> uh, to discuss the classification hearing. Okay. And that would be the only time, well, mm. unless Teresa comes up with some motor vehicle excise abatements, sure. that would be the only topic. Could I suggest um, uh, uh, well, do you have a general range of dates? Uh, I'm fine. I, you know, do you want to do it the week before between the um, 20... 7th to the 30th or the, well, we're, the first we're starting our uh, our little medical adventure the two of us uh, on the 28th so what about monday the 27th well i'll be here <laughs> the 27th of september ken yeah i'm here how about a, some, i'm somewhere it's zoom right uh, yeah, i'm yeah, afraid so yeah. i would much prefer it in person but the manager has said no right Okay. If anything uh, changes in that front, I'll let you know. Can I suggest 11 a.m.? Yeah, it's okay. Great. What, what's the purpose again? To discuss the classification workshop. Okay. And, uh, gentlemen, do you, uh, uh, so we would, we would essentially attend, I, I take it that October 4th classification hearing is going to be a Zoom meeting? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. And, and we'll be invited. Oh, of course you will. That's a public meeting, so yeah. yeah. Okay. So will you have a shortened? If you're going to do both of them at the same meeting, will you have a shortened presentation available that Monday? Uh, for for Class you? Yeah. Like yeah for the classification hearing, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, will little, no, the classification hearing is the. I actually like the format that Liz put together last year, so I'm going to use the same format. But it can be—you can dump a lot of pages. If, if Sean, I'll do my, do, yeah. I'll do my best, can I promise? If Sean's <laughs> going to do the other one at the same meeting. Yeah. Do we do we have any other business to do on, on that meeting on the Monday to the 27th? Uh, only if Teresa from the motor motor vehicle excise, or I get an answer from the Department of Revenue about the year of 58. Okay, do we want to also schedule our regularly scheduled meeting, which would be Thursday, October 14th? Unless you want to make this your regular scheduled meeting. Oh, no, October 14th, I'll need you to sign paperwork. Yeah. 
I'm sorry, so, I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry. Uh, you're you're right. October fourteenth, I, I we would need a meeting then. Okay. This paperwork has to be signed. So let me propose mm -hmm. eleven a.m. for that date. Mm -hmm. I think I can make that, although we're in the middle of what I'm going to be doing my Boston commuting thing for a, yeah. for a few weeks. Well, I hope that works out very well. Uh, well, um, it's uh, the treatments are they're le they're less of them than we thought. So it's once a day for sixteen days. So. Good wow. Goodness. So anyway. Oh wow, you gotta go to Boston six Uh yeah, my wife. So um, you know, so we're I'm coming back and forth on, and since she enjoys staying in the hotel by herself and not with me, I'll probably <laughs> I'll probably come home some of I'll be home some of that time. So I see. Okay. All right, then I, I don't have anything else. So we have our quick... two we have our two scheduled dates for the record, September seven Monday, September twenty seventh at eleven AM. And Thursday, October 14th at 11 a.m. Yep. Right. Gentlemen, Dave, thank you. I got one quick. What what time is the uh, classification on the 4th? 6.30. 6.30, okay. And we will not have to sit through all kinds of stuff. Do you think we get moved up to the front? We're time certain. It's, we have to have that time, yes. That's where we started last year, but they moved us to the end. Uh, well, they, they, they really shouldn't. We'll have to work on that. <laughs> Do I need to wear my tie? That's really up to you. I'm not wearing my tie. I'm not even going to be in the office. I'm going to be at home. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Teresa, we yeah. really thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. We love, the, we love the format of what we got in the, uh, oh, good. on email. Yep. So good. that worked out beautifully. Mm -hmm. Don't go anywhere, Teresa. I won't for at least a year and three quarters or so. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I, uh, any, I, I call this meeting adjourned. Second. Second. All right. Third. Okay. Thank you, Ken. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. Thank, Thank you. you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good, good week. Night. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.